forward to improving wildfire prevention and preparedness. It's with my support as your fire chief that we bring forth a significant opportunity regionally based of creating the Marine Wildfire Prevention Authority and recommend accepting uh, the report and provide uh, direction. We're joined uh, tonight by Marin County Battalion Chief Christy Neal, who oversees the vegetation and fuels management for Marin County and is also working on this initiative full time. Informational meetings concerning this initiative are occurring throughout uh, Marin County. In fact, there were two other presentations going on tonight. The Marine Wildfire Prevention Authority is proposed as a multi-agency effort to fund, coordinate, and oversee wild land fire detection, fuel reduction, public education, defensible space evaluations, and local agency wildfire prevention efforts. It's of note that we had a 10-plus acre uh, fire this afternoon in Nevada off Atherton, and uh, fire is around us and could be present at any time. So we live within the midst and that danger. Over the past 10 years, your fire departments in Marin have created a seamless, unified response to send the closest available appropriate resource regardless of jurisdictional boundaries for emergency purposes. It's more efficient and effective. The proposed MWPA takes us a step further to regionally coordinate fire prevention efforts proactively. It's a force multiplier that will significantly enhance our ability to be more wildfire resistant, sustainable, and a resilient community. The resources and synergy available through participation in the MWPA are above and beyond anything that we could muster on our own toward wildfire prevention and will complement all of our local efforts. It's a significant undertaking, has far-reaching objectives and wide-ranging benefits. I'm confident that the creation and implementation of the authority will dramatically increase not only community safety, but firefighter uh, safety in and around Marinwood, San Rafael, and Marin County. And it's clearly an example, in my view, of where together we're better. With that, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Chief Neal, and we've got a PowerPoint presentation we'd like to go through, and a video to actually start things off to explain a little bit more about the authority. And I will tell you that um, we both just came from a meeting uh, this is a work in progress, so there's a lot going on to really form um, the authority, ensure that there's an appropriate level of governance, representation, and a lot of questions. Some we have answers for, some we want to be able to take those back and ensure we provide those answers in the future, and it's our hope uh, to come back to you in a month's time at the next meeting and uh, talk a little bit more about this and be able to present to you a, uh, a JPA agreement. So. Chief? Great, thank you. Um, excellent introduction, and as uh, Chief Grace said, uh, there's multiple uh, simultaneous meetings going on right now, so the president of the Bruin County Fire Chiefs Association, Bill Tyler, he's in Nevada, and uh, my chief, Jason Weber, is and uh, Ross, uh, Ross Valley Sands uh, tonight doing the same thing. So thanks for having us, and we'll kick it off. I'll give you an overview. We'll watch a video and then talk about the governance of what the JPA is and get some input and feedback from you all. Thank you.
for a potentially devastating and fatal wildfire, similar to the ones that have ravaged Sonoma, Napa, Lake Counties, and Paradise over the past few years. Many marine neighborhoods are adjacent to wildlands because of a strong desire to live close to nature. The recent fire seasons have been longer, hotter, and among the deadliest and most destructive on record. The 260,000 residents have already received fire protection and emergency response services from 19 separate cities, towns, fire districts, and the county. But there is no single agency responsible for coordinating wildfire prevention. The threat of large destructive wildfires in Marin is real. And one of the most important lessons is that a fast moving wildfire doesn't care about jurisdictional boundaries, but a coordinated large scale effort to improve prevention and safety can make a difference, can save lives and property. In response to the need for coordinated action to reduce wildfire risk in Marin, local fire agencies and municipal governments have proposed creation of a new joint powers authority, the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. The new authority's mission would be to improve and oversee programs in urban wildfire detection, improved alert and warning systems, resident evacuations, vegetation management and fire hazard reduction, defensible space property evaluations, educating the public about wildfire safety, and more. This new fire prevention and mitigation program is designed to be in addition to, not in replacement of the current fire prevention efforts currently in place in our Marin communities. The program is designed to bring all of Marin neighborhoods up to a defensible space standard to minimize loss from large damaging wildfires while also allowing flexibility to address local needs. For example, some communities have local fire issues related to the need for improved fire patrols, road widening, increasing the vegetation removal along critical evacuation routes. Some local community issues that can be addressed, for one, is improving your primary and secondary evacuation routes from your neighborhood. Uh, many communities within Marin only have one way in and one way out. How we improve that is by removing hazardous vegetation that's located along the roadsides. A second issue to address would be the improved uh, defensible space inspection program. How that is involved is by allowing a cadre of inspectors to come into our community and to be able to consistently inspect every single property and give recommendations on how you can prepare your home to become more fire safe. Currently, no dedicated source of funding exists for wildfire prevention and preparedness in Marin. Options for securing a dedicated funding source are being evaluated including placing a local funding measure on the ballot in 2020 for voters to consider. It is estimated that approximately $20 million per year is needed to implement an effective coordinated wildfire prevention program. We've been lucky to avoid a major wildfire in Red County, but luck is not a strategy. We need a good plan to make ourselves safer. Research and just plain common sense point out the need to have a coordinated countywide wildfire prevention effort. It's been a long time coming, but I'm very excited to see all this come together. In the coming months, cities, towns, and local fire agencies will have the opportunity to join the Marine Wildfire Prevention Authority, and decisions will be made about securing dedicated funding for the authority's programs. To stay informed, please visit www.marinewildfire.com. Okay, so I think you're all familiar with the impacts that we've had in the last few fire seasons, um, 2017 and 2018 were the most deadly on record. I've been doing this for over 30 years and the last few fire seasons have been quite amazing um, in terms of damage, destruction, size, intensity. And uh, our fire seasons have become longer. They're 84 days longer than what they used to be in the 70s. Um, and certainly, Marin, we have enough vegetation to support high-intensity, fast-moving fires in Marin, certainly under um, extreme conditions like those that occurred on the, in the 2017 fire season, where we saw not only all the smoke, but we had residents evacuating to our county um, as a result of those fires. And then 
2018 with all that smoke for weeks on end that impacted Marin County. You know, we're just right down the road. And so um, we know that fire knows no borders, no jurisdictional boundaries. It's going to spread where the fuel is, where the weather's going to take it, and the slopes. Um, we have 19 um, authorities that have taxing authority in Marin County, um, about 12 fire agencies. We have excellent mutual aid, as Chief Gray indicated in our response, but we really, um, we have no single coordinating or uh, authority for that pre-fire work that is really um, taking um, a lot of time um, and the public is demanding uh, more education, more work on inspections, more information, understanding more about what they can do to to uh, minimize damage from wildfires. So I think we we can tell that the problem's going to get worse in the future um, with climate change, denser forests and vegetation, and an increase in human ignitions. And so that's kind of the background of why we're here. Probably not surprising. Uh, this map is a is a a recent modeling map out of the Community Wildfire Protection Plan that just displays flame lengths in a modeled fire scenario uh, with an extreme weather day. Actually pretty similar to the week, the weather we had a couple weeks ago. Pretty warm temperatures, dry, low relative humidity days, and a good southwest wind. This isn't even under the north wind red flag conditions that we see in the fall, which is just around the corner here. So those red areas are areas where we cannot directly attack fires. We need dozers, aircraft, and a lot of other resources to augment our direct attack. Those areas in the green, a little better, obviously. Um, that's where we can actually sort of put people closer to the flames to do direct attack. But this is uh, one weather scenario that happens on our warm, hot days in Marin. But just a course modeling to indicate that we do have a fire issue in Marin. So not every single day, but we definitely have those conditions. This slide, a couple points on, on this slide. Basically, insurance losses are increasing. Um, there's an increase in people getting their policies not renewed or canceled. Um, overall, the rates for fire insurance are increasing. We're going to continue to see that. Uh, Companies are pulling out of California. They're trying to reduce the risk. Um, and so it's becoming more difficult for folks to obtain and get new fire insurance. Um, just in, in the state last year, 6% of the residents um, had not worked. Uh, Non-renewals had increased 6% last year. And um, we know that from the 2017 fires that many people uh, 70% of the residents there were underinsured, and that it was about $500 a square foot to rebuild their homes, um, and we're pretty sure that that would be equal, if not more expensive here in Marin. So the impacts are real. Some of the background planning and analysis documents that we worked on way back before we've had these last really bad fire seasons, we put together a community wildfire protection plan. We needed this plan so that we could apply for state and federal grants. And it was a framework for us to try to identify, prioritize, and um, deal with our fire hazard reduction activities throughout the county. We were able to do some of that fancy modeling, utilizing our vegetation, overlaid with topography, and give it weather, and uh, estimate uh, fire behavior across the landscape and then prioritize what areas that needed the greatest amount of protection. Obviously where people are is super important as well as um, surrounding communities and such and so that was a guiding document that we use throughout the county right now for all of our work. Um, the 2018 lessons learned document from the North Bay Fire Siege, the board of supervisors convened a committee uh, in Marin County that brought in law enforcement, fire agencies, OES, and land management agencies to figure out what we could do different in Marin, but learn from the folks in Sonoma since they had just experienced um, some significant events. We brought a panel of those folks down and we talked with them about things that they would have done different or things that they could do different. And so we had a big long list of action items um, to be worked on for all the agencies essentially and, and uh, 
there were several items left over that needed a more uh, a more programmatic countywide approach so we couldn't solve it individually so those are uh, referenced in that document as well and then followed up by this last spring's the civil grand jury report an independent audit that um, again identified the need for a, a creation of a joint powers authority and taking a new approach to solve some countywide issues to improve our welfare preparedness and safety in Marin. So that proposal led to a joint uh, welfare prevention authority that involves local agencies, emergency service providers, cities, towns, the county of Marin, all working together under an umbrella to um, work on our welfare prevention emergency preparedness issues. So some of the core elements of this program, um, we call um, first four chunks there the core, um, and that's and we'll talk specifically about some of these, but some of the big topics and the, the number one concern of our residents of Marin is, is welfare detection. How are they gonna know about a fire and how are they gonna evacuate? So we certainly know that we have some improvements needed in the county for that. Um, certainly fire hazard reduction work, uh, grants management, public education, um, and so that would make up the core of the program, and again, we'll talk specifically about what this is, and then um, two other smaller elements that um, we'll talk about, the principal space evaluations and home hardening with the ability for a local jurisdiction or agency to implement that themselves or have the JPA implement it. And then um, that's that last piece is the community level wildfire prevention mitigation. A portion of those funds will come back to the local jurisdiction to solve any local fire prevention issues that they have that they currently don't have funding for. So we'll talk about this. So, you know, obviously one of the, the big items is wildfire detection, evacuation programming, program improvements. Um, there's lots of new technology out there that we probably aren't taking advantage of. There's, there's studies that we need to to conduct to help us uh, figure out what the traffic flow issues are in Marin on a countywide scale, improve our mapping, um, identification of temporary refuge areas for the public so that we can keep up with the rapid, rapidly changing technology, and certainly improving any contraflow traffic planning and mitigations, mass vehicle movement, all those kinds of things. So there's a lot of work that can be done in this area that we really have uh, minimal to no ability because it, it is costly and so there's there's work that needs to get done in this area so that's a number one focus of the core program one of the second elements has to do with fire hazard reduction and our objectives are obviously to reduce um, combustible plants and vegetation that surround and are within so many marine communities we want to obviously protect communities and critical infrastructure and we could utilize a combination of uh, methods to do that with crews, equipment, prescribed fire, grazing, and obviously following environmentally sound practices. Environmental compliance would have to be done before we do that, but there's a lot of work for us to do, and this would be another core area where we can work together. So um, certainly there's benefits of a, of a coordinated vegetation management and fire hazard reduction program. One of these pictures is goats grazing behind a community. Um, in grass, that's pretty effective, but then there are communities that have a lot of brush and other vegetation that goats don't eat. So we need crews or equipment to help deal with that. So, and then, you know, certainly there's uh, community chipping. There's a variety of other mechanical methods that could be as well. Um, this is just a, it's kind of hard to decipher here, but this is an example of some co coordinated um, fuel reduction. Those yellow blobs are ridge tops that have been grazed by goats, followed up by um, a hand crew coming in and limbing and pruning and piling any additional vegetation for removal, chipping. Um, and so what we've done here is created speed bumps across the landscape to help slow fire spread. And um, this benefits multiple communities in the middle there, Sleepy Hollow. They were the, the kind of the program coordinator with parks and open space, private landowners, the school, the fire district, and, and uh, parks and open space. And so that joint effort um, benefits Terra Linda, Ross Valley Fire, um, or Ross Valley south of there, 
And um, so these are examples of things that we need to do on a bigger scale across our communities in Marin. Public education, um, the fear of fire from people right now is very high. And so we need to close that gap and help them understand better how to basically live with fire because it's, it's gonna be here, it's not if, it's when. So some of this uh, effort would be focused on supporting Fire Safe Marin, their community outreach and preparedness education programs, including supporting uh, in, in a greater fashion our FireWise um, USA sites and programs. And you have a FireWise uh, community here in Marinwood, and um, certainly they could use a boost of, uh, of support funds, those kinds of things. And uh, we were, at the beginning of the year, around 40 FireWise communities for FireWise sites in Marin, and we're anticipating as many as 60 coming on board here in the next couple months. So this is a huge workload for Fire Safe Marin, for the community leaders, helping to work with their neighborhoods and, and making them defensible. So that was the core program, the evacuation, alerting systems, warning system, evacuation planning, vegetation management, fire hazard reduction, grants um, to help uh, communities or seniors that have access and functional needs um, and certainly um, uh, public education so that's the core so now we'll talk about another portion of the program which will be a coordinated defensible space management program and this is where the JPA could run this program for your district or you could opt to implement it yourself with a portion of the funds so that's where um, a cadre of inspectors would come and do um, home evaluations, inspections of all the community, all the residences in your jurisdiction. They would give them education on how to harden their homes so that um, they're more resistant to wildfire. Um, certainly talk to them about the flammable plants and a variety of defensible space issues around their properties. It would also include some grants to help support seniors and low-income folks that have access, access and function leaks who probably shouldn't be on the roof cleaning out the gutters or doing those things because they need extra assistance. And then it would include a, a, some portion of a dedicated abatement program for those folks who, who have been uh, counseled, warned, and all those things, and they still refuse to do any work. This um, would be a kind of a unified um, approach to uh, deal with abatement. So defensible space. And then um, the next piece would be the local specific needs. So we know that um, a lot of jurisdictions have specific issues that they could use local a boost in local funding to help deal with because they, they, have a, they just don't have a lack of funds. For example, there might be problem areas where you want to increase fire patrols. Uh, there might be certain vacant parcels of land that need to be cleared off. There might be vegetation, additional vegetation removal needed around, along critical evacuation routes that are specifically problematic for a specific community. Um, parking boxes, we have a lot of narrow one-way roads where we can hardly get our fire equipment into, and so, and people are parked along all those roads with all kinds of trailers, trash cans, recycle, we can hardly get down the road and it's overgrown, and so, um, certainly help designating places where people should park so that we can get through and people can get out get out is a, an example of some local things that, that some jurisdictions could use some assistance in dealing with. So, dedicated prevention funding, you know, is really what we're talking about, about $20 million annually. It would be a stable source of locally controlled funding dedicated to wildfire prevention and mitigation. Um, it, uh, any of those local funds would, would be to uh, supplement, not supplant the existing funds currently being used for fire prevention. Um, there's certainly a potential to put this on the, the countywide tax measure for the March 2020 election. Obviously requires um, three quarters um, support um, to pass. And we know through recent polling and surveys of Marin voters that there's um, support for that. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, this would be certainly ongoing versus one-time grant funding. and. Um, or grant dependents. We, t we traditionally are chasing grants, but we're all competing for the same grants from the state or the feds. And so we're doing a hit and miss job of 
obtaining grants and working in one part of the county here and then over over here so there's nothing connected or coordinated because there's really no good stream of funding um, we know this uh, these this work uh, or some of these treatments are very expensive that grazing six hundred dollars an acre to graze an acre um, and certainly you know grass grows back the next year so once you're treating some of these landscapes to protect communities you have to come back and continue to do the maintenance you can't just touch it once and walk away so uh, those treatments are expensive and so um, and we again don't have any of that pre-fire uh, funding to pay for that we're a suppression response oriented departments um, and things have changed and so we need to change with it so a little bit more about the expenditure plan this is you know conceptual but an estimated 20, 12 million of that uh, 20 would go to those core program areas and and then um, smaller portions 20 percent to the to the other two areas defensible space and home hardening and then community level uh, prevention mitigation so for example um, that community level welfare prevention and mitigation would be an example of that 20 percent coming back to Murray would be about 65 thousand dollars would come back to your board for local control to deal with um, fire prevention issues and so um, we probably don't have that now so it would probably help it would help boost um, dealing with some of the issues that you have that you can't you can't pay for and then again the defensible space home hardening program you could opt to have um, the JPA do those defensible space inspections um, and uh, home evaluations or you could opt to um, take that money and hire your own inspectors or or do it a different way but the money has to be spent on defensible space so um, Godby Research, which is a California-based company who has major clients in California and has done a, a lot of work here in Moran where the subject matter experts in the polling and obtaining public opinion so they conducted a poll in June of all the voters in Moran or at least with demographics and um, polled against um, putting something on the March 20, uh, 20 primary election to kind of to test community support for either a um, a sales tax increase um, which was proposed by the grand jury uh, report or a flat rate parcel assessment or an 11 cent up to an 11 cent per square foot of the building you know the constructed building not a parcel but the building on that property um, and we actually just saw a draft of a the parcel tax study and it looks actually probably closer to 10 cents a square foot would um, do the trick or do the job and so you can see that um, it pulled pretty well the 11 cents per square foot um, and you know certainly in different jurisdictions and different parts of the county um, it pulled differently but um, consistently the uh, the uh, up to 11 cents per square foot uh, pulled the best throughout the entire county part of this um, effort obviously is going to have some fiscal accountability all funds have to stay local and can't be taken to the state Many of you probably paid the SRA fee a few years ago, 170 bucks uh, a property, and that that money, you know, minimally came back to Marin. Um, we got a couple grants, but all that went to the state. We never saw the money that was collected in Marin. Um, so these funds would stay here locally, be controlled here locally by um, a board, um, and the money would have to be used for fire prevention mitigation and can't be diverted there would obviously be uh, independent oversight not only fiscally but also from a citizens oversight group there would be annual reporting of financials and annual audits um, there are several JPAs that are well functioning in Marin so um, this is a, a common uh, JPA is is not a not a new conception um, or concept and then there would be some exemptions available for low-income seniors and um, it would also help us qualify for state and federal grants that otherwise might go to other counties because the JPA would hopefully have shovel-ready projects would be able to leverage 
resources and funding in terms of match. A lot of federal grants need a matching, and um, a lot of times we have a hard time with the match. So let's talk a little bit about what this governing uh, board of directors might look like. And, and I can say, and, and yes. Chief Gray and I just got out of a JPA meeting today where, where this, there's a lot of discussion about the representation on this board. And I can tell you that it will, it will be different than this. But it's basically um, divided up into five geographic areas. And this uh, mimics our uh, paramedic authority that uh, works very well in the county right now. Um, geographically, we work well together um, under that authority with these geographic areas. But essentially, um, we've got uh, in that light green area would be Nevada, followed by San Rafael in the reddish, purple, more central Marin, and then the green southern Marin Mill Valley, and then West Marin with um, some of the small districts and such. And so. There was a lot of discussion today about the membership on this board, and it could it could actually be as many as 19 members. But this is what we've been presenting to everybody, and certainly through feedback, um, more people want to be on that board of directors. So we are definitely making some adjustments based on feedback. But generally, the um, governance structure, um, including a citizens oversight committee, would look something like a. Um, a board of directors, which would be made up of electeds from each of those geographic areas, um, and uh, you know the elected set policy. The operations and budget committee would be made up of fire chiefs, town managers, etc., of a, an eleven-member group, and then um, the advisory committee would be land management agencies. They would could be parks and open space. It could be PG&E. Could be other technical staff or members, subject matter experts that are, that are needed to help um, feed projects, provide advice, and um, technical expertise to um, pull together that, that structure and help uh, prioritize and uh, uh, lay out the, uh, the project funding and program of work. Of course, there'd have to be you know, a big program of work, a strategic plan, all of those things. Right now we utilize our community wildfire protection plan that has a number of projects in there that have no funding. So I think we talked a little bit about why the JPA, uh, a coordinated effort um, where we can all work together um, to implement a comprehensive uh, mitigation and prevention plan, um, pooling of resources and access to to a variety of people, equipment, and such to do the work that we need to do. And um, 20 million, um, the work is, is uh, that seems it's a lot of money, um, but the hardest assets to obtain are, are some of those fire, you know, fuels and fire crews, veg crews, equipment, grazing, that stuff is, is pretty expensive. And so when you look at the vast amount of acres in Marin that need work, um, certainly that, that 20 million and, uh, broken up into those program areas is, is what we think the, the cost of the program could be to make a difference. Um, we need to make a difference in fire behavior. And then how are the land managers, parks and open space, the park service, the water district, how do they participate in this effort? Well, they would be coming together in that advisory board, be bringing, be bringing all the projects together. We don't have to stop doing work on a jurisdictional boundary. Um, this money could could be spent across jurisdictional boundaries. Um, certainly, those who are already spending money are going to continue to bring that money to the table. So um, parks and open space, you know, they have uh, are spending about $3 million a year um, in Measure A funds for fire hazard reduction. They're currently hiring uh, one of our uh, fire crews to do work behind communities. and so. Um, certainly, they're going to continue that work. The water district has has some limited vegetation management funds, but we all know that we need to protect that watershed. That's the drinking water for Marin, and uh, we don't want it to burn up. And so, we want to do some strategic work, um, certainly uh, next to communities, to protect communities as well as protecting the watershed. So, timeline and next steps. So, this last month, pretty much the last several weeks, we're doing presentations to um, all the town councils, fire boards, fire districts, and such, gathering feedback, 
Um, they're, you know, we they're still working on the joint powers of authority that that governance document, um, and finalizing uh, some of the the actual verbiage of the measure. Um, we'll have a another draft JPA to review. There's currently one on the website if anyone wants to pull that down and take a look at it. And we're getting really close to finalizing that JPA. So then we'll need to come back to all those same boards, councils, and and entities that have taxing authority and um, ask you to adopt a resolution that would um, support, if you want, joining the JPA and having the Board of Supervisors put it on the March 2020 ballot. So that has to happen by the end of October. Um, and so the Board would um, adopt a resolution, put it on the ballot in November, and then I guess we'll see what happens on the March 2020 ballot. So that's kind of uh, it in a nutshell, and certainly happy, and Chief Gray will help me answer any questions you might have or clarify me. Okay. So. Right, well, thank you so much for that presentation. That was very informative. Uh, I'd like to open it up to the board uh, for any questions, comments, feedback. Oh, uh, yes. Um, I attended a meeting we're in ready together a while back and um, certain members um, that are participating in that forum were concerned about the amount of oversight or they, I think they refer to it as bureaucracy um, <laughs> that goes along with such a JPA and it does seem that there's a, a number of groups that are going to be having some sort of function for this. But I also heard a comment, I think, from the city manager, San Rafael, indicating that there was going to be substantial leverage of existing agencies in, in managing this JPA. Is that correct? That is correct, because um, the JPA is not going to hire any pensioned employees. Mm -hmm. um, they can either contract, they could contract with San Rafael to provide some of those services, you know, HR or accounting, those kinds of things where they could they could hire, um, you know, a, a termed employee that would not be pensioned, 401k would be all. Um, so they can do a variety of those kinds of things without um, um, having pensioned employees and having a giant overhead. So. I see. Okay. Fair enough. This is probably a silly thing, but in our community, there's been quite a bit of um, these things called bulb outs. Um, you know, where they bulb out the sidewalks in order to make it easier for pedestrians to get across. It seems to me that that flies in the face of um, appropriate evacuation, uh, <laughs> you know, from our community. And I'm just wondering, um, is anyone thinking about that at all? Because we're, we're, we're getting them now quite frequently. We're about ready to get some others in our neighborhood. And um, whereas I think on Miller Creek, which is going to be one of the major uh, thoroughfares to um, evacuate here. We could probably get two cars down um, each side of the median, but with those bow outs, that's not going to happen. There are going to be choke points all along. Gotcha. So there's a, um, you know, there's definitely a uh, dichotomy between daily safety and emergency safety, if you see what I'm saying. Um, but it sounds like most of the evacuation issues are about vegetation and cars parked where they shouldn't be and that kind of thing. I think it's, I think it's a mix. Uh -huh. I think that, that area is pretty wide open. Um, you know, there's, I think, a lot of things that we could do different, and we just need to, you know, start doing some of the work, some of the, the studies, and trying to figure out what makes sense. So, um, certainly... Um, those kinds of things could be considered, or at least some um, some technical advice on on the low outs. No, it's a it's a good comment, and I think we can evaluate that further. It's much like you know speed bumps. What impact do they have yeah. on a regular basis? Sure. And I think the power of this is actually the the unified approach and the recognition that yes, we're all interconnected when it comes to a fire, but we also are day to day and for evacuation purposes. There's a lot of things I think when you study it closely, you're going to determine why didn't that street continue? Why aren't those neighborhoods connected? Mm -hmm. um, shouldn't they be? Mm -hmm. uh, we're in, also in the process of developing a baseline evacuation map 
uh, that we're going to also provide to Marin Wood and, and Lucas Valley uh, residents um, that's going to lay out uh, primary and secondary evacuation routes. Um, think URLs and it's being designed, in fact we just signed a contract to do it, um, but it blend of uh, both cognition and communication. So these maps are very easy to read and they're, they're neighborhood by neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And they'll actually show you your way out in, multi in multiple, obviously we know some neighborhoods, they only have one way in and out. Um, but many have multiple ways and uh, it's just another effort that I think by coordinating it, we're going to put a spotlight on all those areas that need improvement and have, have increased capacity and focus to prioritize changing them. And maybe, you know, when things like you bring up, Director Naylor, this issue of the bulb outs, the pros and cons of those, and while there may be some benefits, there's also some significant drawbacks. If it's diminishing required width in a primary, um, evacuation route mm -hmm. and or egress route for emergency responders. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Oh, did you have some? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chiefs, for the presentation. Um, I uh, applaud the unified effort from all the communities of Marin County. Um, I don't disagree, wildfire is definitely a common thread and whatever can bring us working together, I'm all for it. Um, my concerns are probably similar to Director Naylor uh, with the increased bureaucracy and potential expenses of um, this joint power authority. Um, I would like to know specifically if, for example, the countless directors that will be on, sitting on the board will be compensated and what the compensation uh, would uh, be. Um, our board is all volunteers, but it is not uncommon in other um, um, districts or, or boards to, to be paid for an effort. Um, so I would definitely want to be frugal there. Um, also, um, the the fact that we have to create yet additional bureaucratic um, uh, creature is is um, mind-boggling to me because intuitively I would want all our fire departments to be working together all the time as one fire department. Yes. And. Um, I don't understand why we can't just go that route and create cost savings by reducing administrative weight and put the money towards uh, wildfire, uh, wild uh, vegetation management, wildfire prevention, etc. This, um, I'm, I guess, I might be naive, but um, this would be for me the preferred way to go. That's uh, good feedback, Rick. In fact, um, this has been brought up uh, multiple times. I will tell you, I believe it's a framework for the future to build upon. And I think if we do this right, wildfire prevention and mitigation is just the start. But as I, I know um, Chief Neal and the other chiefs that have been going around to the different jurisdictions, we're finding there are a lot of local issues. And some of which, you know, and you've probably heard me say this before, Fire service is one of those, the most transportable that there is. We literally take a fire engine when we drive 500 miles to the south to provide service. And there's no reason why we can't knock down the border, the jurisdictional borders for the purposes of providing day-to-day -day fire service as well. I just don't have that solution for you today. But I believe that this framework will apply as a foundation and a building block that I think we can add additional shared services as we move forward here. So I would like to think we had a, a better solution. And I'm also committed um, to the comments related to the bureaucracy and minimizing that. And whether it's frugal or not, we want to make sure this is an example of, of good government and sharing uh, services and taking full advantage of the economies of scale so that we can reduce the costs and be more efficient and more effective. That's the key, to do it cheaper and better and in a unified way so that if you do everything right as a community and your community next door does nothing, we're not at risk. And that way we've got everything, everyone doing, and this is our best 
I think, shot an attempt at being able to do that. And as you said, unified approach. I think also in the meeting that I attended, um, similar comments to uh, Director Perry's um, were voiced. And one of the, I guess, missing concepts was that this is an additional program. Fire departments that are there on call 24 by 7 to deal with emergency services are not the people that are going to do this work. That's correct. Right. correct. There's ec this is an extra yes. service that yes. needs to be funded, and yes. it's important for people to know that. Right. So, thanks. Thank you. I do agree with both of my co-directors about the funding and making sure that what you grow. But so in that sense, so when we're when you guys are talking about the JPA coming in and helping with mitigation in neighborhoods and stuff with people that are not doing what they were asked to do, is that building on Firewise the community already has or the community has not managed to make themselves a Firewise community, would they basically, would this be instead of that? I think it could be both. Um, certainly um, some level of home evaluations is probably needed in, in Marin Woods so that there's some actual technical advice being given to homeowners on how to reduce the the flammability of the vegetation surrounding the house, the actual house itself hardening to make it more resistant to embers and uh, uh, fire. And so um, people need that. I've driven around in Marin Wood and you have a lot of vegetation right up against the sides of the house, very flammable vegetation. And so I think there's um, certainly some education that could help residents understand what they can, they can do and as an effort for whole streets and numerous streets to be more defensible and work together as neighborhoods, then that's where Firewise comes in, where it could be a community effort. And so helping, helping folks build on that and um, work towards being Firewise. So we still need to keep pushing. The oh, yeah. To be yes. Firewise. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, I'll just add in my two cents and then add it, open it up to the audience. Uh, I, I, I see the, the idea of the framework being laid for something bigger. I am feeling unsettled. There's something that feels very slick and packaged and rushed about a tax increase. Um, and I don't like the model of the first square foot. Um, and if that's not what the grand jury recommended, like I would not vote that way. I would go with what the grand jury recommended. Um, I think it's more equitable. I don't know. I, I, you know, I mean, I can't say like yes or no because weighing the personal versus the whatever. But the, I think what would look like a better faith effort is all of these agencies pitching in together to figure out how to do this with the resources that we have, um, or maybe yeah, maybe not twenty million dollars a year. I, I have a hard time understanding why this would cost so much money and why we need to fund it the way that it's being that we're being told that it will be happening in March, because I also think that opening up that vein of local communities with that type of money and our own fire issue related stuff and the fact that we might need to be going to the, our voters for in a tax initiative next year too, you know, I mean, it's sort of like that, yeah, you know, neighborhood versus county. So, I mean, I see it, but I'm at the timeline of it, I would have to, uh, you know, get have more information on just to line up with uh, the district. So, uh, but I'm glad that everyone's talking about it. I'm glad that this seems to be the future. Um, but I don't know how much money it costs to make this movie or who paid for it. But again, I sort of think like that probably costs money that maybe could have been spent doing the work rather than telling us about it. And so maybe some people need that. But I, you know, again, the efficiencies of I, I don't need a slick video. I would just like the whatever it is that. Thank you. Well stated. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Okay. Open public, Ron. Uh, yes, I have uh, a couple of questions. Uh, number one, uh, you gave a figure uh, for the goats grazing. What is the cost per acre? Nine hundred dollars. Okay. How would 
County Service Area 13, who would be the contact person if we wanted to engage goats to graze on our open space? Uh, we could um, get you in contact with the contractor who runs the goats. Okay, Fire so Safe Marin has a contact. Okay, yeah. so that's $900 an acre. Mm -hmm. All right, also, I think you should add County Service Area 13 and County Service Area 19, that's Santa Venetia, to your list of unincorporated communities that uh, may or may not be represented on the, uh, the overall committee. So they would be represented by um, either San Rafael or Marin County in the CSA, County. in the county CSA, they would be represented by the county. Well, we have a problem with your department. And we can't get you to cut the weeds uh, on the county farm. Parks and the I think it land. should be a matter that's brought to the Board of Supervisors because for uh, 40 years, the weeds were cut every year. Hey, wait, Ron, are, we, are we jumping off topic here? Sorry, I'm coming in. I'm sorry, here? I can't hear you. Can we, stand, <laughs> can we stay on topic? I don't want to jump too far out. Well, this is part of the whole program, but. Uh, this is uh, an ongoing discussion because uh, County Parks and Open Space uh, Director thinks the uh, lizards and the birds are more important than the people because if uh, we do have an ignition in Lucas Valley with our 40 mile an hour winds, uh, we're going to lose houses uh, on Appleberry and Idleberry in Marinwood. And as far as I'm concerned, the residents are the endangered species right now, uh, not the lizards and the birds, because for the first 40 years of cutting, the birds and the lizards always came back. So it wasn't uh, a death knell. And uh, that's just uh, an ongoing uh, problem we have in uh, CSA 13. And I echo what uh, Isabella said about be careful about creating another huge, expensive bureaucracy and spending more money on the bureaucracy than necessarily on projects. Because uh, this is a, a danger that uh, lurks, I think, in all government programs. You got to be alert uh, against uh, an entrenched, uh, very large, bureaucracy rather than uh, having skilled administrators uh, make the decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Stephen, well, first of all, I'd like to ask a question. I thought uh, CAL FIRE was the experts in wildfire management. I don't know how it works when there's like the, the fire in, in um, how the command structure works, but I thought they were in charge of everything. Uh, and so I'm a little confused what's, what you're trying to create here. So just, just a question, maybe educate me on how wildfires are fought in California. So CAL FIRE contracts to us, Marin County Fire Department, for uh, the protection of State responsibility area, which is a good chunk of West Marin. But the question is command structure. What I don't see here is command structure. I see taxation, but I don't see accountability. I see agencies, and one of the the problems with JPAs is they have power to tax, power to impose laws, and they can issue grants. But if you have no political uh, power. For example, if you're Ron and you, your number one issue is, is that field next to his house, you may not get any money. And so, so it's not like we don't see the, the, the benefits of, of having experts in command, uh, command structure. If it's not there, it's like, you know, what are you actually doing? So I, I don't know. I, I guess you're saying, you're saying, Cal Fire actually answers to you that if there was like a huge fire, who, who would be in charge? We would here in Marin, either the 
the county of Marin, the Marin County Fire Department, or so if, it's on, if it's on local jurisdiction, okay. then it would be the local fire agency. Okay. Um, the state uh, uh, contracts, again, to Marin County Fire to protect their portion of um, the, the wildlands. So each, each fire chief is their own... It, yes. it's it's like they they're the ones that are yes. in charge if it's it happens in their jurisdiction, in their jurisdiction. Correct. okay so one the other issue is here in Marin County like many jurisdictions we have some uh, fire agencies that are really quite frankly out of control as far as pensions as far as it, uh, overtime I mean they're getting paid crazy amounts of money it seems like we've got what we're doing is keeping the fiefdoms and adding something on top and what is needed I actually you know it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood I actually agree with all the the neighbors and Ron tonight um, I think we need a better way of going about it it's the the command structure that we need before the taxation we need the administrative um, way that this is going to be implemented I certainly couldn't support anything where we're sharing one vote with uh, with you know five other uh, unincorporated uh, districts. We have, I mean, it's just we'll send you a hundred bucks, you send us back twenty, and and you know it's it's not a good deal for us. So 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 I think you guys, I, I do have the faith in the expertise that uh, the professionals have here in Marin. What I, what I want to see is I want to see that, that agency created and really grapple with some of the huge issues that we need to grapple with and, and frankly cut down some of the administrative duplication. Thank you. Bill? Yes, I have a question for you. As I know Ron's aware, last almost 50 years, we used to have in the 70s and eight, early 80s many fires in the summer up behind Appleberry, I mean, up, uh, those, uh, Miller Creek, up the hill, and coming from the west into Blackstone Canyon, because I remember several summers and my neighbors being up on the roofs, hosing them down. What has changed from then to make it such an urgent matter, matter now versus back then in fire danger. So we, we talked a little bit about um, today's uh, vegetation, the overgrown vegetation, the lack of uh, historic fire, um, the lack of vegetation management on current lands and around properties and communities. Um, it just keeps growing, it doesn't go away. And then we've got longer fire seasons. They're 84 days longer today than they were in the 70s. So our period of vulnerability is much greater. Um, we have more people built out in the wildlands living. Um, and um, we have vegetation that can support fairly high, high intensity, fast moving wildfires. And it's just a, a matter of, of ignitions on a day where we can't, where we can't pick it up. Well, I'm just looking at Marinewood Lucas Valley being here for 48 years, and the vegetation hasn't changed, the homes haven't changed except for Regency Estate going in, which took out the fire trail up there and easy access. So the vegetation hasn't changed and all that stuff. So what is our area? Our area hasn't changed, or I don't quite understand having been here. And I haven't seen the threat change. Looking at Mill Valley, that threat going up one hasn't changed. Going up on the Tam watershed hasn't changed. So okay, I'm trying to figure out where track. we're going. Can we, can we kind of rein this into the present yeah. here? Okay, because it's not meant to be a back and forth. This is just common. No, this is asking about what, why do they need the money and why are, what are they planning I, to do? I understand. So, but I'm going to move on to the next comment. So thank you. Um, did you have a comment there? Sure. I just would say I lived here 25 years. I mean, we haven't had those fires up in the hills, and so I, I would venture to say that the vegetation has changed and that hasn't been cleared out and burned to, you know, like that healthy burn. We to the, burn yeah. Right, we haven't had that. And so that has built up to, I think vegetation has has increased, and, and you can see it in all of our neighbors, in all of our, in our yards if we don't 
Spirit. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, I have a couple questions. Um, is there, I see the Citizens Oversight Committee, is that included in the JPA agreement? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. And um, is there a sunset to the uh, JPA or a reevaluation after 10 or 15 years? There's a check in, I think every five years, and then I think it's still being determined on the actual sunset date if it's uh, what pulled. What the uh, polling showed us, they um, pulled eight, 10, and 18 years, and or in perpetuity um, repealed, by, repealed voters. by voters. And appealed by voters, repealed by voters was what was the popular um, answer. So, so it would take a lot of effort from the neighbors to get it repealed. It's not, a, what does the check in mean when you talk about check in? The check-in um, is basically to reevaluate the proportion of the funds if it's being distributed in those core areas. If there wanted, to, if there would be any adjustments to that, more being towards defensible space inspections and less to another program area. It could be, um, I think, a variety of things. I'm not sure what they, what the JPA says in terms of all the aspects of the five-year So annual, annual reporting, there would be actually a higher frequency than even annual, but annual reporting and then a five-year check to make sure the distribution of the funds was being used for the highest priorities. Right. And so if you, if you consider where, where we're just talking about fuels, and if you examine, and most of us are historians of fires, and we pay attention to what so we can learn to make future decisions, if you look at the Tubbs fire in Santa Rosa, there was a, another fire 50 years prior to that that occurred in the exact same area and it traveled in the same places. The difference was more fuel in homes. That, there wasn't any really significant difference other than that. More fuel and more homes. It, it grew and it died off. And it grew and it died off and it wasn't removed. And so part of this, if we remove some of the legacy fuels by a whole different combination of effects, we're, we'll hopefully be in a, a, a maintenance mode and create these buffers and then we'll be able to address other things um, with the project funding. And I live two blocks away, so um, my neighbors have Juniper and Cypress. Is there something that's going to happen similar to San Rafael where that's banned or managed? Currently, um, all of the uh, agencies in Marin are evaluating uh, fire prevention codes for an upcoming adoption and that's one of the considerations that's being made to, or to ban certain species in, in a similar way to Marin. Uh, Mill Valley just went and did that uh, last week. Um, they, uh, they were also pursuing a ban of, of brush and shrubbery within five feet of the home and that turned out to be a, a recommendation uh, rather than a requirement. But uh, much like San Rafael's zero to 30 feet, um, you know, junipers and bamboo and these others, as you've mentioned, um, cypress, uh, acacias, uh, those other plant types would be um, restricted. So, so would it be the Board of Supervisors for unincorporated? Right. Mm -hmm. And we'll get a chance to uh, act on that locally and reviewing that here in Marinwood on those code amendments. Thank you. Okay. Anything else for the public? Yes, I represent the Lucas Valley Homeowners Association Fire Waste Committee, and for your benefit in the public record, we strongly support the JPA initiative, primarily because it does what has not been done before. It is the prevention side that needs most of the work. Our first responders have yet to fail us. Although they've never been tested to the degree that our risk presents, Marin County with disaster. Our first responders would not be here in front of you asking for this prevention support if they had the ability to keep that disaster from happening without action taken on the part of the public. We truly need education of our property owners. I've heard uh, a couple of comments in the room. Uh, some mistake the JPA for a a fire um, 
uh, management process. It is a fire prevention effort, not a fire management process. Other issues about what hasn't changed, you know, it looks like it's the same thing it was 50 years ago. Well, there are three things that uh, have happened, not just the uh, uh, continued growth of vegetation that hasn't been burned out, and the incursion of additional properties being built, many in very close proximity to each other. The third thing that has changed, and we need to really pay close attention to it, is fire science has advanced dramatically. And if we don't learn from the current state of the art, it is tremendously foolish. We know today that um, junipers growing next to, your, next to your home are a great deal more of a concern than the grasslands growing 100 feet from your home. And yet we don't pay attention to that. We've got 50 years worth of vegetation that represents very substantial risk that was not recognized even 10 years ago. So those are some of the lessons that we need to learn. So educating our property owners and educating contractors in what needs to be done to help find solutions to fixing those aesthetic problems as well as the physical risks, that's a key concern. Another is we need to encourage our residents to take action and to take action with some incentives that will help them make the right decisions. Because it's not easy to go change 50 years worth of landscaping overnight. We have to provide them good solutions and good alternatives that are a reasonable balance between the safest thing you could do and the things that are going to make our communities the places that we still like to live in. But we also need to enable our, our first responders, our agencies, and our community organizations with the expectation of reasonable and consistent enforcement of regulations. And that's, I think, what we've just heard of is, is underway in most of our communities. That truly really needs all of our support because it makes no sense to have a good, solid, consistent regulatory framework and a set of standards in one community when the one next door has nothing. I think it was said the fire really has no boundaries, and that is true. So if this community closes its eyes to its responsibilities, to itself, it has an impact on its neighbors. We can't lose sight of that. And finally, if, if we don't uh, have consistent enforcement in our regulations, we truly will have the, the, the continued state of chaos that we have today. Marin has some places with good enforcement and good standards and good um, public relations between the uh, enforcing agencies and the residents. That doesn't exist everywhere. And I personally believe that we do not need an army of enforcers and ticket writers. We need the education to help residents understand the risk, enable them with incentives to help mitigate that risk, and at the same time, we need to make sure that they are self-regulating as opposed to putting a huge burden of bureaucratic regulation on top of what we already have. I don't think that's what any of our first responder agencies are advocating. They're, they're asking for more resource. We have to be responsible in giving them that resource for the appropriate public oversight of the citizen council as opposed to making it a part of our bureaucratic government. And finally, I will say I have made a, a, a fair amount of effort in the last uh, couple of months to try to make some changes in our local community and run into the kinds of obstacles that this JPA will actually help to overcome. Our existing structure, our community and county agencies are not set up to solve problems that are multi-jurisdictional easily on the prevention side. If we're responding to an emergency and a disaster, they do an excellent job on the fire side. And I think they do an excellent job on the law enforcement side. But on the prevention end, we are woefully inadequate. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Cool. Um, Mr. Just, a, just a, a quick point of information. The major wildfires in the open space in Marinwood and Upper Lucas Valley were caused by a serial arsonist, Correct. and he was apprehended. 
Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. All right. Thank you, everybody. Let's move on to item E2. 